Well, earlier in our show, Andrew Horansky spoke with U.S. Representative Tim Ryan. Ohio's 13th Congressional District Representative had thrown his hat into the ring for the Democratic nomination for president, but he dropped out last October. Now he's supporting former Vice President Joe Biden. Now we're going to go to the other side of the aisle. Drew is now joined by President Trump's son, <laughs> Donald Trump Jr. Hi there, Drew. Hey guys, well as we were talking about earlier, the VIPs are certainly here and you'll recognize this guy, Don Trump Jr. I don't know if we should be elbowing or doing yeah, the social well, we distancing can, we can thing. Do some social distancing. I'll get in trouble for uh, <laughs> we, not we, the we mask all right will. Now, but I figured for TV I could take it off for a few minutes. Well, there you go. Well, welcome to Cleveland. I know Air Force One landed about an hour ago. Um, obviously, we're looking forward to tonight's debate. Uh, what do you think the big takeaway, the big headline is going to be once this is all said and done? You know, I, well, I, I think I'm sort of used to that with the media. If Joe Biden manages to get up there and not collapse, they're going to say he won regardless of how he performs. The reality you know, Joe Biden's been doing this for 50 years. I imagine he'll do fine. He hasn't been campaigning, really. Uh, he's basically been, you know, in the basement locked up for the last two months. So I imagine he's doing a lot of debate prep. So uh, I expect him to have, you know, he better have sort of the greatest debate performance of his career. Otherwise, uh, w what's going on? It's really my thing is the other 22 hours of the day. Uh, sure. You know, how is he going to handle that when he has such a difficulty? Uh, you know, again, when he does make sort of the attempted campaign stops around uh, nearby Delaware. Well, your family's taxes certainly have become a big talker in recent days heading into this debate, some ways overshadowing some of the other issues. What do you say to that, and, and what do you think about the way that story's been covered? Well, I think it's nonsense. I mean, I think they're cherry-picking certain things. You know, they clearly don't talk about the $50 million in payroll tax that was paid during that same period of time, because that's not good for the narrative. They don't talk about the real estate taxes. They don't talk about the jobs created. That's how it works in real estate, right? You buy an asset. You pay tax when you sell an asset. If you hold it, if you do improvements, the year they're talking about in question, we actually did the old post office, which was a government contract. Contract. We won a bid against 30 hotel companies from around the world. With that came historical tax credits for saving a 100-year-old building, the old post office in Washington, D.C. We got that from the Obama-Biden administration. It took an act of Congress. So we're doing what everyone said we, what everyone else would have done. That's the reality. Joe Biden has been writing this tax code. Joe Biden did the same thing as it relates to avoiding payroll taxes and all these things, and that's come out now. The difference is when Donald Trump does it, it's a big deal. When Joe Biden does it, it's nothing. But if you have a problem with that, talk to the people who wrote that tax code. Joe's been doing it forever and probably doesn't understand it all that well. We only have a few seconds left, but not everybody has a famous father. Humanize your dad. What is a memory that you have from childhood of your dad that you want people to know about your relationship with yeah, him? Honestly, there's and, so many. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, he's an old school guy, right? So he's got, you know, sort of a very Germanic father that brought, you know, my grandfather grew up, he was the man of the house at 13 mm. years old and he had to go to work because it was a little different than it is today. There was no sort of social construct to help you out. And so I think my father has some of that. I think the stories that are always, always amazing are sort of the humor, which I think people see, but also a lot of the empathy that I think he doesn't like to show. He sort of looks at it as, you know, if I show empathy, how am I going to get a deal done sure. with China? He, he was able to do that, but it's because he's been able to put that image. That's why Donald Trump was able to get a peace deal done in the Middle East. You know, there's sort of the tough exterior, but then there's the personal relationship. The so he's been able to do that. All of these things that, you know, he's still yep. in the Middle East. I mean, it's the holy grail of geopolitical politics. Sure. Donald Trump got two done, plus Kosovo, which is, you know, a little different. Same problem, uh, different region. Uh, you know. He got that done because he has both of those things. He only likes to show well, perhaps the one exterior, uh, but he's very capable of both. Well, it's clear you're very proud of him. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Back to you.